and Life Talk with Muriel Desar. This is Talk 100.3. 11.40 on the clock. A very good morning to you. Joining me in our conversation right now is Dr. Suresh Menon, MD Internal Medicine Specialist. And he's here to talk to us about influenza, about the people who are at high risk of getting that influenza. Doctor, who are those? How do you identify them? Yeah, that's an important subject I wanted to stress, uh, Muriel. Um, yeah, as listeners, I know I'm Dr. Suresh and I'm a specialist in internal medicine. Uh, working at the Faki University Hospital. And we get a lot of patients who are uh, visiting us every day, who now with this season on, getting a lot of uh, symptoms and signs of uh, flu illness, as generally everybody calls it. But then uh, there are a, a few specific class of people who get these illnesses and who are at high risk for this. Right. One is ladies with pregnancy. At mm-hmm. any stage of pregnancy, starting from stage uh, pregnancy, not, uh, term one to the end of the term, then children who are between you know six months to five years of age. Then we have elderly individuals who are above the age of 65 years. They are at high risk. Then there's a separate class, the chronic illnesses, individuals with the chronic illnesses. Now, you have a lot of people with a lot of illnesses day to day as an internal medicine. I do see a lot of them, diabetes, hypertension, kidney illnesses. So these are all people of these chronic illnesses are all people who get a lot of, uh, you know, their immunity goes down. So because of these conditions, you know, whether it is a kidney problem, a liver problem, or any other, uh, you know, developmental problems, their, their general basic immunity is down. This causes or this leads to them getting these infections much faster. And then, of course, as doctors, we are also at high risk as healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, all the people working in the in the healthcare industry, in the hospitals. They are all at high risk because people come to the hospital sick and then there is always this reason, reason of, uh, you know, getting the air contaminated and uh, we are also at high risk. You know, doctor, you've got to tell me something. Now, all of us try home remedies, correct? I mean, we've been hearing about you have a glass of orange juice or your vitamin C's, you're sorted or you have like the traditional Asian households will make kada and give it to you, right? And you yeah. seem to have that thinking you are immunized. <laughs> How right. true is true? And is there a myth that you'd like to bust right now? It's, you know, probably I would not call it a myth because um, if it is a um, simple common cold, for example, then the situation is entirely different, I would say. Because common cold is not a serious illness. It's mostly a very self limited illness. Just two to three days of fever, maybe sometimes even may not be the fever, just the snuffly nose, the stuck up, stuck up, you know, cough for a few days. These people can definitely be benefited by the home remedies. There is no harm. You can have maybe a tab- tab- tablet of paracetamol and some, you know, ginger coffee or any of these uh, homemade drinks can make them feel better because the throat and this, you know, congested feeling of the the nose. phlegm and everything. Exactly. Yeah. So that that uh, uh, that feeling, and maybe a. a, a a uh, what do you call um, and vaporizing uh, substances like you know wicks or something that you put in the or eucalyptus or you put in water and take a steam these things do help them but the classical influenza that we are actually concentrating here on is not such simple illness because many people who are well immunized or who has a good immunity themselves probably may not get it ba- far but people who are on high risk like what, what we highlighted earlier those people may stand to get this illness a little more uh, severe and deeper in your system. So we cannot sometimes take it lightly. If you have a fever or if you have a high-grade fever, for example, lasting for two to three days and doesn't show a letdown, then it's best that you see a doctor. And probably you might need to get an influenza test also done to identify that it is influenza. Okay. Now, vaccinations, you were telling me about this and I seen that huge smile on your face when I said... Does that work? Does it really work? And if it does and if it doesn't, I want you to put light on the subject. Yeah. And what is the best time to take it, doctor? Okay. Before I go for the influenza vaccine, I just want to make a little more serious um, you know, uh, subject out of the influenza by just highlighting a few statistics. See, the seasonal influenza occurs all over the world with probably not completely as a, as a, a, a seasonal uh, output, but sometimes highlighted during the seasons. But you can say annual global attack rate of about 5 to 10% in adults and about 20 to 30% in children, which is a huge number. 
and annually according to the epidemic statistics about 3 to 5 million cases of influenza is reported every year and what? around 300,000 to 600,000 deaths every year because of influenza because of influenza how does it lead to death yes so that is why I, I actually wanted to bring up this subject into this uh, talk show, into this talk show, into this radio station, because people should know that sometimes, as they think, flu is not just a simple illness, because that's what I was telling about earlier. When we have influenza, it can in in certain people it can go a little hit hard or it go a little deep. They can develop uh, a role instead of the upper respiratory symptoms, they can actually go get it into the lungs and develop a pneumonia. It can also affect of other organs with serious complications. So people who are at risk, especially the elderly people, this usually happens, you know, most of these illnesses and the deaths are happening in cold and, you know, icy areas, mainly in the temperate Europe, not in the temperate areas, but in the cold Europe and Northern Americas, where the seasonal of the, the winter is really, really hard. And sometimes people do not notice and there is elderly people at home, nobody to take care. And these people, if they are hit, people at home, nobody to take care and these people if they are hit and develop an influenza pneumonia nobody will be there to take care of them that is where most of the deaths actually occur not in young you know healthy adults right. so that is where we should be concentrating but the number is really alarming that is why our uh, you know the, the healthcare groups suggest that we go for the best influenza prevention plans and the best influenza prevention plan is a vaccination Okay. The other things are again we all know now we started people have started to you know you go to any any shop or or office or sometimes you still now see the sanitary things uh, sitting there you know sanitary uh, our sanitization things uh, people get this uh, in your hand and start rubbing it that is it, become a habit. It's because of fear. No, it's fear. It is a fear of the old things that were right. happening, but it's a learning curve. It's 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 an understanding of mm. what new things can bring. Correct. And it's good. So now people know that there are certain sanitizing things that we need to do. Cough. When you cough, close your mouth or use a, a tissue or something to close your mouth so that it doesn't spread out into the air, affect other people. Then when you are uh, you have a cough or you have a contamination sub uh, suspicion, either sanitize or wash your hands well. Keep away from people or don't go to the office if you're actually sick and sneezing and coughing Correct. because you can infect others. Children, they should be kept from school. If you see that there is a fever or there is an illness that is developing, keep them from school one or two days. It might actually help them as well as the other. But others. if it doesn't get better, then you that's when you that, hit the panic button and run to the doctor. Exactly, yes. If okay. two to three days of fever doesn't settle down or other cough and other symptoms and severe tiredness, lethargy, body pains develop, then it's always better that you contact a doctor, especially in children. Definitely, yes, in elderly. Okay. Yeah. Now, when is the right time, doctor, that I need to go and get a vaccine, whether I am diagnosed with flu or not? When is the right time I can do it? A flu vaccine can be taken any time, except that when you have a, a fever. If you are running a high-grade fever, it could be an influenza also or any other fevers or any other illnesses with a fever or any body tiredness, it's better not to take a flu vaccine at that time. But otherwise, you are okay to take the vaccine. Even if you get a flu, Maybe after two to three weeks of the flu, you can still go ahead and take a vaccine. Why? Now, the people, there's another question people ask me. Why should I take a flu vaccine when I already had the flu? I had this year's, uh, you know, my, my heard, quota, my quota of flu. I've had this year's quota to finish. Yes. It doesn't work that way, It right? doesn't work that way because, <laughs> again, simple reason. We know that uh, why I quote this very often is that subject has been highly, you know, floated in the in the... Uh, news, media, everywhere, what has happened to COVID. That's yeah. a learning for everyone. There are a lot of variations to the COVID that has happened. Several strains came up. So every now and then it was changing and people who had COVID once had COVID again. In the same way, most of the viruses are behaving the same way. Mm. So if it is a flu, flu, uh, the flu virus, there are different types of flu virus, for example, influenza A, B, C are common ones and the commonest is A and B. Okay. So, if you got an influenza A, it doesn't prevent you from getting an influenza B later on. Right? Interesting. Even if you got a B, it doesn't prevent you from getting a different variant or a, a different, uh, 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 what do you call, a different uh, micron of the, the B from getting you another, another infection later on. 
So that is why we are always saying that it's always better to get a vaccination because each vaccine, it's mostly the vaccines that we use here are tetra vaccines. Again, uh, taking a vaccine does not prevent you 100% from the flu. Uh, sorry to say that, but still we advise people to take the vaccine because there are at least four of these variants which are commonly researched for the current year. Every year, the vaccine changes. Right. Now, doctor, is there a particular cover? Like if I take some, take a vaccine, say, in January, until April or May, I would not get affected that much by the virus. Um, each year, the WHO as well as the local authorities do a study, do a research on what are the variants that are in the, in the air. They collect samples from the air, collect samples from certain uh, dedicated areas, hospitals maybe, and they understand which are the variants that are currently applicable to that particular endemic area. So what you take here may not be 100% true for America, may not be 100% true for the East. But generally, WHO suggests few of them commonly involved and then the locally highlighted ones. And that is where the vaccine is made. So it affects those kind of three or four variants. That's why it's always called an influenza tetra vaccine. Tetra vaccine means there are four variants in that. Okay. So these vaccines made will cover, definitely these ones will be covered. So you won't get an attack of these, these viruses. But, but still, for a limited period? For a one-year period because okay. that is when the influenza vaccines antibodies tend to go up and then start coming down. Okay. So after an year, probably your antibodies that is developed with this particular vaccine may start to go down. And if you are a high-risk individual, you get a chance of getting another infection by the next year. So you advise people to take vaccines every year. That is for influenza. Not like other vaccines, which has more years, like 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. There are several other vaccines. Childhood vaccines. They are 25 to 30 years. Correct. So influenza vaccine is not like that. It is an every year vaccine. So if you are really want to be protected yourself, if you are a high risk person, it's better that you take it every year. Because the vi virus changes, the vaccine changes. Correct. So that particular virus for this year may not be 100% valid for the next year. So it's always better to update yourself at least for a few consecutive years to get yourself enough antibodies in your system ready for your fight. Wow, you know, you've knocked some sense into me and I think I'm going to be running to the doctor very, very soon with my little one. But yes, if you are suffering as well and, you know, you think it's just another cold, it's going to go with the weather, the weather changes is adding on to it. Please go and get yourself checked if it has been lingering on for a very long time. Dr. Suresh Menon, MD, internal medicine a specialist doctor in our studios. Doctor, thank you so very much for taking time out, coming to our studios. How can people reach you? I am working in the Faki University Hospital situated in the Dubai Silicon Oasis and uh, our um, website address is there, faki.care and everyone can reach me in this particular website or for any appointments or bookings and uh, our number is uh, also available on the website. Absolutely. So you can take your appointments through okdoc.com. <laughs> Yeah, you can go ahead and do all of that. Safaki University Hospital is the place where you can go and find Dr. Suresh Menon. If you are feeling a little bit shy coming on the radio and explaining your problems, not a problem, don't worry. Just give a doctor a call or give the hospital a call. It's called Faki University Hospital and they'll be more than happy to assist you. Just say, I heard Dr. Suresh Menon on the radio and I'm sure he will do the needful. Thank you once again for taking time out and coming to our studios. Mm -hmm.